Team Keep It Clean, we back with another one, with another special guest, my guy Jason from Huddle Up Films. But before we get into it, I got to apologize again, because as y'all know, the previous video that we did together, I had audio issues. And this video that we are getting ready to watch right now, uh, it was recorded on the same day in the same segment with the same setting. So my audio is messed up in this one as well. So my apologies. I will make sure next time I have another special guest on that we get that squared away and we make sure we click all the right buttons. So I just wanted to give you all a heads up. Again, my apologies. Sorry for my audio. Again, his audio sounds good and he's the one that you want to hear from the most anyway. But I appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. I love y'all so much. Thank you for the way that you support this channel and thank you for supporting his channel as well. Hope you enjoy the video. So team keep it clean. Having my guy Jason from Huddle Love Films was so nice that we had to do it twice. And today he's on a very special episode of questions from subs because in this episode, uh, we of course, we spoke about the Baltimore Ravens rookies and everything that they can bring to the table for the Baltimore Ravens. And we're looking forward to it. Shout out to my guy, Jason, for breaking it down. Only the way that he knows how to. Y'all make sure y'all check out that video. But speaking of rookies, rookies can't hold everything down for the team. You got to have some vets in there to show the rookies, to guide them along the way, and just to be backups as well, and some potential starters. Now, the Ravens roster, as we know, it's not all done yet. The Ravens still always continue to add pieces. Uh, even after the draft, they add pieces in June, July, sometimes even in August. This is what they do on an annual basis, and there are still some pieces out there that they could add. But let's get to this first question from my guy, Emerson. He said, trying to keep this one short, two defensive and two offensive free agents that I think could help this team out a lot. And number one, he already mentioned my favorite who I've been waiting for. He said, you've already mentioned Justin Simmons, Geno Stone's replacement to free up Kyle Hamilton and great insurance for Marcus Williams, given his recent history. Justin Simmons to the Baltimore Ravens would be a move that I would love for them to make. And I, I just, I remember when the Broncos, they first cut Justin Simmons, I was shocked, but I just knew, I wanted the Baltimore Ravens to sign him, but I just knew it wasn't gonna happen, that I knew he's gonna get picked up by somebody, but till this point, he's still a free agent. Do you think he would be a good fit with the Baltimore Ravens? I think he'd be an excellent, excellent Ooh. fit. Now, <laughs> I have to admit, I haven't studied Justin Simmons closely over the last couple of years. He's on another team. But I love Justin Simmons' play style. I loved him coming out of college. He's just an excellent player. I think that uh, that may have to do with is another team offering him a bigger role than mm -hmm. what he would have with the Ravens. So yeah. it's great for us to have interest in him. But if he can go somewhere and start and make some big money, uh, you know, working towards his next contract, getting all that playing time, mm -hmm. then I believe that he would probably take a deal with another team. But fitting in here, all his experience – Obviously, he's a tough physical player. That's the Ravens style. Mm -hmm. uh, as as uh, who asked who asked the question? Emery, did you say? Yeah, Emerson, yeah. Emerson, as Emerson said, uh, we want to free up Kyle as much as we can to to be Weapon X to take away mm -hmm. the other team's strength. So when Kyle's moved around, it would be great to have another veteran, strong safety, and then of course the Ravens. Right now, we have Marcus, we have Kyle. And then we have all the all the rest are rookies. So getting another vet in there would be great. Daryl Worley is another guy that I think the Ravens would be very comfortable bringing back because he was able to hold it down and and be quiet back there. You know, you, you didn't hear Daryl Worley get called out for yeah. getting beat a lot last year. So mm -hmm. that's what you want for your backups. You're not going to expect somebody to come in and rack up a bunch of interceptions. But if you can just be solid back there, tough, do your job, and uh, not give up a big play, Man, Justin Simmons, though, a favorite of mine. So I don't know how much he has left in the tank, but I bet he could fill in really, really well for us. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Now, his number two uh, on defense, he said Calais Campbell. So reuniting with a familiar face. He said he's not what he used to be and hasn't played too much from the edge position, which is where we need him. But he's been effective in his limited time there. He had six and a half sacks last year and would be a great veteran presence. Mm. 
I loved Calais Campbell when he was with the Baltimore Ravens. I appreciated Calais Campbell when he was with the Baltimore Ravens. I I just mm, I don't know. Uh, this it would, he wouldn't be my first choice for the Baltimore Ravens to bring him back because um, I feel like they, especially in this day and age, like he talked about, he got six and a half sacks last year. But I feel like in this day and age, especially the Baltimore Ravens, um, they need to get more athletic uh, on the at, at defensive end. Um, but Calais Campbell, I. I don't know about that one. What about you? Not sure about that one uh, as well, because the Ravens have plenty of depth on the defensive line. We're talking all six guys from last year are back. So Justin Matabike, Travis Jones, Michael Pierce, Broderick Washington, uh, and Brent Urban. So it's all five guys are back oh, from last yeah. year. Um, so, yeah, the Ravens have a lot of veteran players up there in Graven. I'm kind of with you. Uh, if we bring in someone uh, – I would like to give the undrafted guys uh, a chance. I would like to see if we can bring in someone with more pass rush upside because I think we have a lot of veteran run stuffers, and to me mm. that's what Calais does best. And uh, plenty mm. of leadership with Roquan even behind those guys. Okay. Uh, they know what they're doing. They're in the spotlight of their career. So, I mean, I think Calais is still a quality player. Mm -hmm. I said before I was glad to be able to study Calais while he was here because if he were on another team, I'd say, oh, he's just trying to hang on and get those hundred sacks. Now, nah, Calais really did a job for us when he was here as far as stopping the run and, yeah. and being a steady sure. player. So I love mm -hmm. Calais. I just think that uh, if we're going to bring in someone, let's give a new some new blood, a quicker, faster player with some, with some upside who can maybe make a name for himself uh, as a Raven in the next four years instead of just patching it up for another year. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like that. Uh, now, flipping it to the offensive side. Dalton Reisner, he said, a great depth and a potential starter at guard. Now, that's one that um, I, I, I'm never, especially with the Ravens offensive line, I see a lot of question marks there. Uh, and it's, it's, it's potential, uh, but we won't know till we see it all together. This would not be one that I would be mad at at all if they were to bring in a Dalton Reisner. How about you? I, I would love it. I think that, you know, uh, Josh Jones, another veteran that was brought in, Dalton Reisner would fit the same. You know, the Ravens are up against it. I think a lot of it has to do with how they feel about uh, rookie or second-year player Sala, uh, Malo Sala Moewe Laulu. Um, obviously, he struggled a lot last year in the preseason, couldn't get snaps even in that Week 18 game against the Steelers. So Sala's development was, you know, he was behind the curve. Mm. Now, the Ravens have 10 linemen that they're looking at right now when you talk about Nick Samak, the backup center, and Sala. Those will be your ninth and tenth guys because you already have Josh Jones. You have a uh, backup tackle. You have McCarry in there. So do they believe in Sala or do they want a veteran in there? Reisner seems like the top of the list to me as far as, uh, yeah, you know, blue chip type player, first end of the first, second round type draft pick who has mm -hmm. played some NFL snaps. Okay. Now, um, it's interesting because his last – guy on offense because he did two on defense and two on offense uh his last guy was tyler boyd but of course tyler boyd got signed to the tennessee titans but his reasoning for uh tyler boyd uh, he said our wide receiver room for me is not a liability given the potential and given our tight ends in our run game however our wide receiver room is not a not full of weapons like the rest of our offense is uh tyler boyd could have turned our wide receiver room into yet another problem for defenses Whereas right now, wide receiver is the least of defensive coordinator concern facing the Ravens. Now, Tyler Boyd is gone, so we don't need to talk about him. But um, there was a player, and I'm not advocating for the Ravens to bring this guy in, but it just seems like the Ravens would bring this type of guy in uh, because they're the Ravens. Martavis Bryant. When he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was a problem. Now, we know that was years ago. Um, and then, of course, he kept getting suspended. Then he got, like, banned from the league for a little bit. Then he got reinstated. And now uh, the Cowboys, they released him, so he's a free agent. I could see, not that I want them to, but I could see the Baltimore Ravens just bringing him in for a visit just to see, uh, see what kind of speed he still has. Obviously, they drafted Tez Walker. We know that. 
but I can still see them bringing him in. Montavious Bryant, Montavious Bryant was a tall receiver, long legs, long arms, and he had good speed. We'll see if he still does for whatever team he goes to. But would he be somebody that you could feel would be a good, if he still has it, would be a good addition to the Baltimore Ravens? And why or why not? Why not? I would say why not. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, why not bring him in? Mm-hmm. I feel like at this point in his career, if he's still available and willing to come in here, that you give him a lot of snaps in the preseason. You see how he works with Lamar even in practice. Not that Lamar's going to be playing in the preseason game, but give him some snaps, man. Like that chemistry with your quarterback is important. And we saw with Zay Flowers had it instantly last year with Lamar. Mark Andrews has it in spades with Lamar. Uh, Bateman's been a work in progress with that as far as the off schedule and the on schedule stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we don't know how Tez Walker is going to fit in with Lamar, but Martavius Bryant, not just the speed and size, uh, you know, he is an excellent uh, ball tracker, high Mm -hmm. pointer of the ball. Like there's a lot more that goes into being a deep threat than being fast and having a little height. Like Martavius Bryant can track the ball really well. Um, I think that if the Ravens were interested and drafted Tez Walker, and there were Michael Gallup rumors uh, as well. Same kind of like downfield threat. Somebody you could line up at X and give you a different look to really threaten the defense. I would like if Martavius Bryant would be in here. I would like to see the Ravens experiment with a deep receiver. And then also I would like to see them if bring in like a guy that could be more gadgety. Um, so I don't like when – Zay Flowers was pigeonholed into like all the gadget touches last year. I want Zay Flowers exploding off the line of scrimmage, threatening the intermediate, threatening downfield. I don't like when Zay is in motion so many times and being used as a decoy for a handoff. So those are the two types of receivers that uh, I would like to to see the deep area guy and the short Mm -hmm. area guy, because with Andrews, likely Bateman, Zay Flowers, we have a ton of guys that can work the intermediate. How about a deep guy like Martavius Bryant? I would like that. So we'll see what Eric DaCosta decides he wants or doesn't want to do. Eric DaCosta, no pressure, my friend. But team, keep it clean. Make sure you check out my guy, Jason, from Huddle Up Films. Uh, the link to his YouTube channel is right down below in the description. Uh, again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your input, uh, not only with me, but with all the team, keep it clean. And we all thank you for everything that you do uh, for Ravens fans Y'all, again, make sure you check out his channel because he puts in a lot of work. And I promise you, I guarantee you, uh, you two things. One, uh, you will not be disappointed. But then two, uh, you will definitely learn something new that you hadn't thought of before. Because Jason, he presents a different angle uh, at looking at things. So that's one thing I really, really appreciate about him and all the work that he puts in. So, again, I thank you for your time. Uh, I thank you for your insight, and I thank you for being willing to share it with all of us, too. And Graven, thanks for everything you do. Uh, thanks for the kind words. And, and yeah, I would just say to the fans out there, fans know more than people give them credit for. You uh, mm-hmm. go on my channel, watch some films, watch some cut-ups, and you'll be able to pick up patterns. You know, And I find that I even I learn stuff from the fans, and I love what they catch and what they comment. Comments make my day. Like The views are good. The likes are good spreads the channel, allows people to see it. But I love hearing the comments, whether they agree with me or disagree with me. So right back at you, too. Thanks for everything you do for the flock, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. So thank you, Clean. Appreciate y'all watching. Again, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on so you do not miss anything, and leave a like on the video. And I look forward to seeing y'all in the comment section as well. We are...